Beaver pelts are where it all began, but primarily for making felt hats. Although the Native Americans have used pelts for garments since the beginnings of time, it was only much later in the history of the advent of the commercial tanning processes that they found favor in mainstream society. Beaver, in particular, because of its warmth, was a very important part of a northern winter wardrobe. Even today, beaver is coveted for its warmth and stylish looks. In the grading section, we saw how beaver is graded by the density of its underfur. Now, we'll take a look at why this is important. We have all heard that beaver are the most difficult of the wild furs to dress. The process is very exacting and labor-intensive, particularly for some of the traditional garments like sheared beaver. There are only a handful of fur dressers left in the world that have the expertise to properly dress beaver. We are very fortunate to have Norm Byman of the Tubari Fur Dressers explain the fascinating process to us. Tubari not only dresses furs for the fur industry, but also specializes in dressing small lots of trappers' furs. When the furs arrive at Tubari's plant, they are given their own identifying stamp. This consists of a combination of small punch holes specific to each owner. We will stamp with a hammer stamp and that stamp will be recorded on his work order. The dried pelts are placed in a solution to rehydrate them. This solution is a combination of salt, water and a few chemicals. Rehydration takes about 12 hours. Even in the first part of the process, the quality of the pelts can have a direct effect on the result of the process. They'll spend the night in this solution. Okay, here I have um, two prime examples of improperly handling of a beaver pelt. This beaver obviously was uh, either left too long before it was uh, skinned or uh, left too long before it was fleshed and dried. And what happens after uh, rehydration, the first rehydration, you can see all the hair is let go. This is due to all the bacteria that is in the, uh, or the protein matter that is breaking down in the uh, leather fibers, creating the bacteria to, the skin is going to lose all its hair. Pelts that are stale, yellow or oxidized, have been over dried. As a result of being dried too quickly or with too much heat, they don't rehydrate very well. There's a much higher chance that oxidation has caused some damage to the roots of the hair, causing them to slip. Once the good pelts are rehydrated, the pelts are broken or loosened up by hand on a beam or mechanically. This scrapes and loosens the leather side of the pelt and allows it to better absorb the second rehydrating solution. This is the type of machine we use. It's called an automatic fleshing machine. This machine is used to break the leather fibers after the first soap uh, before we put it into the secondary soap in order for uh, better penetration into the leather. Now, you can see how it's opened up the hide completely and scratched the surface of the leather. At this point, the pelts are fleshed for the first time. The second solution also includes a degreaser, which is meant to take all the natural oils out of the pelt. If these are left in, the pelt will decompose and these oils break down through the rest of the dressing process. This process and the soak time for the pelts is very exacting and takes an experienced fur dresser to monitor the process. If the pelts are left too long or the solution is out of balance, all the hair can slip. After this soak, the pelt is fleshed again to take down all the heavy spots on the hide like the shoulders and tail. This is the second of four times the pelt will be fleshed. This is a very dangerous operation as these knives are razor sharp. This allows the tanning solution to penetrate all parts of the hide. At this point in the process, if the pelts are to be prepared as sheared beaver, they must have the guard hairs removed. This is referred to as the plucking process. It is the most technically difficult and labor-intensive part of dressing beaver. The intent is to remove all the guard hairs and the immature guard hair stickers and leave the underfur intact and undamaged. Looking at a cross-section of a pelt, the guard hairs are rooted just a few millimeters deeper in the hide than the underfur. The pelts are soaked again in a solution that only penetrates the hide to the layer of the guard hairs and acts to loosen just their roots. It's a very delicate balance not to loosen the roots of the underfur, too. The exact formula and the timing is the most highly guarded secret in the fur dressing industry. Just a minor error can be a disaster and ruin thousands of dollars worth of pelts. After the soak, the hide is placed on a beam and the guard hairs and all the new growth hairs are pushed out the pelt. 
You can see all the white hair coming out. <clears throat> That's the new growth underneath. Now that the long guard hairs are out, now when we pass a second time, you can see all the short white ones coming out. See that? See all the little white ones? That's the new growth. Now, why it has so much new growth on the belly? Why? Because the beaver is always dragging his belly on the ground. So nature's telling the animal, we must grow more fur on our belly. Again, this takes a great deal of skill and expertise. If this process is not done properly, the hairs break off instead of pull out, and the pelt is full of prickly needles called stickers and is useless. Even the most accomplished pluckers can only finish 12 to 15 hides a day. Actually, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing we do the process before, like we are not going to shear some skin like that. Usually we just keep it long hair like I showed you before. So that was a mistake. Okay, it shouldn't have been uh, sheared, but uh, we try to analyze. It's difficult sometimes, but we try to analyze all this before we go further in the process so we don't have too many skin like this because it could have been used, but uh, this one is very damaged too, okay? After the pelts are plucked, they are soaked in another solution to tighten up the grain in the hide and tighten up the roots of the underfur. From here, all the hides, both those that were plucked and those to be tanned, long hair and natural, are put in the tanning pickle. This could take up to 24 hours, but requires years of expertise to judge exactly when the hide should come out of the pickle. They are fleshed again, then into another tanning solution overnight. When they are removed from the solution, they are fleshed again for the fourth time. Next, they are either air dried or dried in dryers, then drummed or milled to break down and soften the leather. The next step is to stretch the pelts to open the grain and allow it to reabsorb the required oils. Okay, what we did was we just backled or restretched the skin back. Um, after each milling, the skins always shrink. So what we have to do is we have to backle them and stretch them back to a bigger size and also to suede and, and make this leather softer. The last step in the tanning is to replace those oils in the leather and the fur or dress it up. This is what gives rise to the term fur dressers. After we apply uh, tanning oils to the pelts, we uh, put them into the kicker, and as you can see, it's uh, pounding the oil right through the leather fibers. The shearing is an entirely different process and is performed on the finished tanned fur. It is done by passing the pelts through a cutting machine, and depending on the quality of the underfur, heavy versus semi, as well as the intended final use, the pelt can be shaved to lengths from 16 to 6 millimeters in length. With many of the new fashion and fun furs, sheared beaver lends itself well to dyeing almost any color under the sun. The lighter colors require even an additional step, which is a bleaching process where all the color is removed from the pelt and then dyed. And lastly, the pelts are drummed and cleaned and now ready for the fur designers and manufacturers. This is the part of the processing where the uh, beavers are uh, being put into the mill or the drum to be cleaned. These particular beavers are all plucked and sheared and they're going for their last finish. Following the tanning process for beaver hopefully gives the trappers some feel for the technical expertise and the amount of labor required to produce high quality beaver fur garments. From start to finish, the entire process may take two weeks and the fur manufacturer will often have three times what he paid for the raw pelt, hammer price, and just the dressing process. And all this takes place even before it reaches the designers and manufacturers. This also may help trappers understand the difficulties we face in trying to increase and maintain the prices we receive for the beaver pelts.